My name is Andrew Schoen. I'm a partner at NEA. For those who don't know us, NEA is a large global venture capital firm. We invest quite broadly into tech startups, all the way from the seed stage through the growth stage. A few stats about us. We manage about $30 billion of committed capital across our funds, making us one of the larger firms out there. We've invested in roughly 1,000 startups historically and have been lucky enough to see about 750 of those go on to achieve successful exits, which is actually the highest number of exits of any venture fund in history. We're really proud of that stat. And it's probably a, the highest consistency ratio of any scaled venture fund. But I would say the stat that we're most proud of is that almost half of those exits, so we crossed 300 not too long ago, were IPOs, which makes NEA by number the largest single backer of founders to take their companies public. And that's what I'm excited to talk to you guys about today with Shensi. So I was lucky enough to meet Shensi in the boardroom of her prior company, which we backed. It was called Expanse. And just about two and a half years ago, Expanse was acquired by Palo Alto Networks for roughly a billion dollars, so not too shabby. Uh, but given the trajectory that Shensi is on with Merge and the scale that they've already achieved, I can pretty confidently say this is going to be an even bigger outcome. So Shensi, why don't you take it away and tell folks a little bit about what you guys do at Merge? Yeah, absolutely. Hi everyone, I'm Shensi, co-founder at Merge. Uh, we offer APIs that allow developers to integrate once to offer full category of integrations to their customers. We currently cover HRIS, APS, accounting, CRM, ticketing, file storage, and marketing automation, and soon three other categories that we'll announce as well. Uh, but yeah, really excited to talk today about how we've really approached our product roadmap um, during these ma tough macroeconomic times. Awesome. So that's right. Our, our, our topic today is product roadmap against a challenging macro backdrop. So we're going to delve into four topics on that. The first one is pricing and packaging adjustments. What can you do in this type of market environment? The second one is customer onboarding. And what can you do to optimize and streamline that process? The third one is infrastructure spend and the improvements that you can make in infrastructure. And the fourth one, which is everybody's favorite topic, is product integration offerings, which Merge is a world-class expert to talk about. So Shensi, why don't you tell us a little bit about pricing and packaging adjustments? Oh, absolutely. Sorry, I clicked a little too hard. <laughs> um, so for pricing and packaging, I think especially right now, there's a lot of companies that just are not doing well. And that includes some of our customers, especially in the tech space. A lot of later stage companies were not able to fundraise. Um, people were hiring less. And some companies were also struggling to sell. And so what we really valued from our board members was they really encouraged us to think long term about these customer relationships. Some of these logos that we've signed on in the past year are really iconic generational companies. And it was important for us to be understanding that even though they might not be doing super well, we had to prioritize the customer relationship and really try to make sure that we would be able to help them through these next few years. Um, and prioritizing quality revenue was just a lot more important. Of course, it'd be a lot easier for us to be like, no, F you, we're gonna charge you 200% higher. But that's just not the right way to treat our customers. And we really, really wanted to make sure that during each conversation, we wanted to show what our customer, what our value was and retain that relationship for the next few, for the next you know, 10, 20 plus years. Um, and another thing that was really important about pricing and packaging was you always have to reassess how your pricing and packaging is working. And especially in certain different macroeconomic times, you have to think through, okay, what we were doing last year, is this still working right now? We actually hired a VP of Finance as like employee 10, and she ended up make, being a huge game changer for our company. And we've always been looking at these metrics over and over and over again. Every, every two weeks, every board meeting, every executive saying, is this working? How are our metrics trending? What is the customer feedback? And it's, it's just top of mind for us all the time. Awesome, so it sounds like alignment is kind of the key word here, and when times are tough, making sure that your pricing is flexible and scales with the customer is kind of the key way to support those relationships for the long term. So one stat I'll share is that last year, NEA and a couple other venture firms surveyed about 3,000 SaaS startups. And last year, 46% of those companies were offering flexible usage-based hybrid pricing model. And this year, that number is looking more like 61%. So the advice to flex your pricing model to invest in those relationships for the long term is very, very timely. And so let's talk a little bit about customer onboarding. Yes, so customer onboarding is really important for us. As an API company, actually a lot of customers onboard first and then sign a contract with us, especially since we have a self-serve option. Um, and what we've noticed is, especially since 
a lot of companies, um, if they test the product, they don't have great documentation, they don't have great support, they're not going to use the product. And so upfront, we really, really prioritize making sure the integrations work really fucking well. We also really tried to make sure our documentation was awesome. We built it completely in-house um, and our designer just poured over every single detail. And we also wanted to guarantee that customer support was extremely responsive and that we had the best customer support in the industry. So our team, we always try to respond to customers immediately. If there's a bug, we fix it immediately. If there's anything that anyone has a question about, we really try to make sure there's documentation or a help center article or some automation um, that can help our customers as quickly as possible. And so this is especially important right now where there's fewer at-bats because fewer companies are purchasing new vendors. And so every single time a customer has eyes on your product, we need to convert them. Uh, so we've invested a lot in our onboarding. We built it in-house. We have a really amazing PM that's always looking at conversion metrics and also looking through where are people bouncing off, what is customer feedback, what are the intercom messages, what, is, what are people saying, and it's played off a lot for us. Awesome, so seamless onboarding is really, really, really key. Let's talk a little bit about infrastructure spend. That's a hot topic today, especially with the chips shortage. How do you think about optimizing and improving the amount of money you're spending on infrastructure? For sure. Um, so we have a lot of customers. When we first came out of Stealth, we immediately had a couple thousand customers sign on, and it probably would have been very easy for us to get to the point where our AWS spend was just out of this world. Um, but I think one thing that was really great was that our, or my co-founder and our VP Finance had a really strong partnership from the beginning to really make sure that Merge was a high quality business. Our metrics from the very first day mattered. We couldn't have cogs that were out, that were horrible. We needed to make sure gross margins looked right, operating margins too. And so we've always really tried to like, coordinate the partnership between R&D and finance, looking at what our AWS spend is, how we're slamming our servers, especially as a new customer on boards, how are these contracts structured, are they efficient for us, is this a good deal? Um, and also making sure that when we are allocating engineering resources to optimizing the spend, is this worth it? Is this worth the ROI of launching a new product, or is it worth really trying to reduce what COGS looks like? And my co-founder is just really, really good at this. Um, and I think we've been very, uh, we've particularly been really good at this because we, from day one, want it to be a high quality business. Yeah, I would say it's been a real delight to watch you guys scale. I mean, Merge is a pretty unique company in that there's a high volume of customers, right? Thousands of customers. But there are also some massive enterprise logos in that customer cohort. And you don't often see those two things together. And this is a very mission critical piece of technology. And so you need several nines of reliability and uptime. And you guys have managed to pull that off, right? Being probably an order of magnitude, the most consistent, most reliable, most comprehensive vendor in your space. And you, you not only deliver that consistency and robustness to the enterprise, but all the companies that are mid-market and startups and smaller, they benefit from that uptime as well. And then finally, we should talk a little bit about everybody's favorite topic, which is uh, product integration offerings. And, and Shensi, as I mentioned, is a world-class expert in this category, so we'd love to hear your insights on this space. Yeah, I'm definitely not biased at all, of course. Um, but I do think integrations are revenue generating, and especially if you use a third-party provider, it can oftentimes be cost-cutting. Um, there's a lot of situations where you have to say no to a customer because they're using some you know, random ATS or file storage system that you don't currently integrate with. And saying no is so painful for the sales team. But saying yes means reallocating resources away from your core product towards something that you're probably not the best at. And so, it's really interesting to be seeing how this industry is changing over time, but product integrations have such a huge impact, especially during this macroeconomic time. You can say yes to more deals, and you can also um, reduce churn, because if someone is integrating every single system that they're using into your product, it's so much harder for them to unplug you and stop going to your product and stop using it. And so we've, we've really been trying to encourage our customers to think long-term about the impact of integrations. That's awesome. One of the cool things about, about Merge, and I'll, I'll say this since, uh, since you can't, is that it's a dual value prop, right? So for folks who look at it conservatively, using a platform like Merge is a great way to save both cost and time, right? So relative to allocating a team of developers to go and build your suite of integrations in-house, which will probably take upwards of a year, you can do it efficiently and quickly with Merge. And then on the flip side, for people who kind of look at things more aggressively, Right, using something like Merge is a way to accelerate your product roadmap. It's a way to stay competitive in an increasingly competitive marketplace. And it reduces friction in the sales process. Right? If you can already support all of the integrations that your customers want off the bat, that's a fabulous thing. And so for the, 
for the small fraction of folks here that aren't already Merge customers, I would encourage you to check out what they do after, uh, after our talk. Yeah, and one great example of this is actually Drata. They were our first customer that ever signed with us. Um, and for them, they became a unicorn in just one year. And I, it's really amazing to see how integrations made a big impact in not only the revenue growth, but also how they've continued to scale over time. Awesome. So I hope we were able to share just a few things you know, about how to adapt your product roadmap and strategy in a challenging macro environment. Um, hopefully this was, this was valuable and helpful. Shensi, if folks have, uh, have kind of questions about our talk, about Merge, et cetera, how can they follow up? Yes, absolutely. So you can find us at our booth in the other room. Um, I'm there, my co-founder's there. You can always come by and say hi. Uh, but you can also find us at merge.dev. And I'm personally available at Shensi at merge.dev. And you can always reach out to me if you have any questions. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, guys.